Friday everyone and welcome back to the carport. Got a few people out mowing their lawns so hopefully the noise won't be too loud. But I'm essentially done with the storage system that I'm putting over here on the back driver's side and wanted to give you a little bit of a recap of what I've done. I went through a whole host of different design ideas as to how to get the shelf and the storage to all work together. Bending the conduit, using different angles, shorter connectors, supporters, etc. And ended up going with a simple triangle here. It gave me the most amount of storage in both of the spots that I needed and interfered very little with the sleeping area, which is right here underneath of it. So you could see there'd be some rude awakenings if I were to lift up and hit my head on any of those. This minimized that issue and also gave me a whole bunch of storage options, both below and up above on the shelf. If you're not familiar with any of my builds, you might not be familiar with these maker pipe connectors. They work with three quarter inch EMT conduit. This is a great company made here in the USA. They've got all these different affordable connectors. The T connector is the most common and that's what I tend to use. It'll connect two of them at a uh, 90 degree angle. This is a 135 degree connector. And I'm sure this is all work that I did on the roof basket that I made. I love the EMT conduit because you can also use a bending tool, give a little bit of a bend for some style, some flair, or also for some functionality. So I'm gonna be using 10 of the T-connectors for this project, and then also gonna be using one of their 180 degree connectors. Of course, you'll need some three quarter inch conduit, which goes for about 12 or $13 for 10 feet of it. I'll give you the exact cut measurements down in the description. You'll need one of these. This is a hanging U-channel that's used a lot on electrical and plumbing work to hang pipes from the ceiling. Also, you can get these off the Maker Pipe website, these star inserts, which allow you to go into the end here and then thread something into it. We're going to be threading in this U-bolt, and then also these plastic caps, you can get those on the Maker Pipe website as well. They're going to be used to go into the end to protect uh, yourself so that you're not cutting off of these and also to protect some of the trim on the inside. Of the car. So please pardon the look. We were just at the beach, so we got a little bit of sand around. Uh, first thing I do is I remove the bracket here for the seat. I cut this, took just a straight knife, a razor, and cut that out. And then I'm going to take that hanging piece and I'm going to use that to replace the seat bracket. Now you'll see down here at the end. I had to cut through and connect two of the openings just to get it to line up right. So that'll go right there and get tightened down. And then I'll throw the, throw the bolt right back in there. This will be the structural support for everything else that we do. Once that is bolted down, then we're gonna take a piece of conduit. And it sits right in that U-channel like that. And we're gonna use some radiator clamps to clamp it down and hold it in place. Just for the spacing, we wanna leave I've got a little mark here. That's a little bit of extra that's left over. I wanna make sure I leave enough here. It's about an inch and a quarter to fit one of those T connectors. That gives us the support that we're gonna need down here at the bottom. Then we're gonna use the oh shit handles up here. And we're gonna connect a bar between the two of those using two T connectors. And then we're also gonna use these back here for the child seat. It's a challenge to tighten one of these down on camera when there's just one of me, but essentially you've got a hex bolt here with a nut on the back and then this puzzle piece here at the top that interlocks and that'll hold on to the pipe running uh, perpendicular to this one. I've installed the back vertical and then the front vertical and also then the horizontal for the um, for the shelf. I'm just using T connectors to do that. These are all very close in measurement, so it's important to grab the right one when you're doing it. The front vertical is an inch longer than the back vertical. We know that the Honda element slips or uh, slopes forward as it goes, 
and then this one is in between the two of them is 29 and a quarter inch i'll have all the measurements below when you're measuring these guys out there's a few cool little tricks to remember uh this adds an inch and then this adds an inch and then it catches on to an inch of the pipe so in total this is three inches long you've got an inch of the pipe in there see you've got another inch here and then about approximately an inch for the width of the other this pipe. is probably the part of the project that i was most excited to figure out uh these star inserts so you can put those into the end of the pipe. It just takes a hammer and some whacking down. These ones have a uh, lip on them. So that they go in and they seal real nice across the side. You know, those other ones that don't have the lip on, I've tried working with those. I get frustrated because I can't get them to go in exactly straight. Maker Pipe has some ideas on their YouTube channel about how to work with these. With shorter lengths of pipe, you can use a vise or there's other tools that you can use for different things. Um, I haven't gone that far into it. The one issue with these, I mean, I did want to try to use the other ones and then put this at the end and drill a hole through it. And then that's what this U-bolt would fill through or full, go through to protect the trim here on the car. You can see it's scraping that up right there. Um, you know, I'm never gonna sell this thing. It's gonna be mine until the wheels fall off. So I don't really worry about the resale value, but some of you out there might. I hang the hook up inside of there. I've got the thread coming down. And then I'll just go ahead and insert this and start. Now that it's tightened it. up, we can pull it up and we're gonna use a 180 degree connector to put it on there. And then we're gonna add a three inch extension off the end of the other One side. One of the great things I love about working with this maker pipe, especially in non-square situations, is the measurements aren't always exactly on, right? And as I said, you've got an inch in there. Well, if you need an extra quarter inch, you can slide it out a little, even up to a half inch. You know, as long as this isn't uh, supporting a load that's pulling out of it, you can get some more out. The other thing is, you know, once you bolt it down, you can still slide it around like this. It's not like with a piece of wood, when you should put that screw in, you've got to back the screw out and move it, and then you end up with Swiss cheese wood every time you move the screw a little bit. I've gone through, added up all the pieces. I haven't tightened anything down yet, so I can still slide it around, make sure it's in the right position. Now that it is, I'll go through and start tightening everything up. And the last two pieces before I put the shelf on are just these two uh, horizontals that come out. It was scraps I had laying around. I think it was nine inches and six inches. They don't have to be precise because they're only attaching to the one side and they'll supply some support there. I took a level to everything to make sure that, you know, I didn't have anything sloping in any direction. But even if I do at a later date, it's real easy. You know, just loosen one of those bolts up, slide it up, slide it down, and then you're good the to go. The shelf here is made out of half inch plywood. I painted the top and bottom black. I'm gonna leave the sides with the uh, wood strata in there. I'll sand that extra bit of black off that got on while I was painting it and put a clear coat over top of it to, to showcase that. You know, the height of this shelf, you can adjust it whenever you want to. I put it at this particular height because I wanna be able to store my water jug right here. Here's the water jug in place. This is why I really needed that support from up at the top because I'm gonna be carrying a lot of weight back here. I'll use Velcro straps to secure it in place so it's not rattling around. If it does start to rattle around, then I'll put it somewhere else. I think it's a convenient spot because the kitchen's also gonna be over on that side. When I put the cot in, the kitchen's gonna pull out from over here. So I think that's a real convenient place for it. And what's a project without some zip ties? So I've got this uh, dog crate that I picked up here locally used and I've been using pieces of it for different parts of the build. This will just give me storage back in here for pillows, camping gear, whatever I need to throw back. You can see I've got the other panel over here hanging. Same deal, I leave that open whenever I'm driving obviously so I can see out there but when I'm setting up camp I can hang all kinds of stuff up there. Uh, for storage in the evenings and make room for the bed. I wanted to expand the attic storage if I need it, so I went and added another one of these horizontals running across the top. 
you know, I may use it, I may take it down. It's just nice to have it there as a possibility. That's the great thing about working with this stuff. I said it before, but you know, if something doesn't work, you take it off and you can move it, you can slide it, you can adjust it, and you're not permanently done with it. So my roof rack, for example, has been through like three or four iterations, depending on what I need. Do I need to take the solar shower with me? Do I need the spare tire? Am I running solar panels? Do I need the awning? You know, I can just take different pieces off it, expand it, add, subtract, however I need to. Um, you can get shrink wrap. I might have mentioned that to put on these. It's a really simple process to do that. I did it with the roof rack just because I wanted the solid black look. For the shelving units in here, I'm going to use it or leave it as the uh, two-tone. I kind of like the way it goes with the two-tone of the car. On the outside, there were just too many different shades of colors, I thought. I wanted to go with something solid black. Also, once somebody mistook me for a work truck because it just kind of looked really utilitarian and didn't have a nice, uh, smooth uh, look to it. So I wanted to go with something that was cleaner looking on the outside. You know, the shrink wrap comes in these 10 foot lengths and then you just use a heat gun and put it on. It looks really nice when you're done with it. Just take, push the ends in and you can still put those caps on the end, the protective plastic caps if you want to. I just recommend you heat that a little bit um, before you put it on, it makes it easier. Once finished, I go around, find any of the open ends and go ahead and pop one of these protective pieces of plastic in there. It'll save me from scraping my leg or from putting a scratch on the refrigerator or something like that. I hope you found the video useful. If you have any questions about it or any uh, comments, I'm always looking for ways to improve work or different things to add or take away that aren't necessary. So feel free to comment below. Again, thanks to the guys at Maker Pipe with all their help putting these things. I was there when needed someone who wasn't getting over you.